Greetings, Mark, all the way from Queensland, Australia. How are you doing this evening? I'm very well, Peter. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm doing good. Fantastic. I am here this evening to celebrate with you your directorial debut. This is fantastic. This is brilliant. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the film and I get really excited and even a little bit nervous when I conduct interviews, even more so when I've enjoyed their work. And The Rooster is a film, sir, that I have thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, out of all the films that you could have made for your first one, why The Rooster? What made you want to make The Rooster? Well, firstly, thank you. And I'm just so pleased you did enjoy it. It's such a, you know, it's it's kind of an overwhelming thing, sharing a film and putting something into the world. And you, you never know if people are going to like it, how people respond to it. And, and so when, when it does resonate with people, it does, it really, it, you kind of go, like, Oh, thank God. <laughs> that's, 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 it, it's just, it's really great. It, and it means a lot to me. Um, but look, there, there's two, two sort of, two sort of things that, that, you know, led to the rooster sort of coming in, into the world. Um, the first was a, a few years ago, I sort of lost myself in a way, in a, in a sort of battle with my own brain. Mm. And it was a really difficult, scary time. Um, I think a lot of Australians, you know, a lot of people in the world go through it, you know, depression and, mm. and sort of uh, really facing some horrifying thoughts that mm. you have no idea what to do with. Yeah. No idea how to process, no idea how to communicate what's happening. Yeah. Um, and I think particularly for Australian men, no vocabulary or way to express what's happening inside of you. Mm. And it's a period where you feel a lot of shame or uh, a lot of self-hate and a lot of sort of self-violence in a way. And, yeah. And it's 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 when you're in that place, you're not you anymore. The world isn't really real anymore, and everything is sort of filtered through this chemical imbalance in your brain. Yeah. And fortunately, I uh, came out the other side, and many people don't. So I, you know, I sort of feel very lucky that I did. Uh, and you look back, and you go like, "What was that? What 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 was that period of time?" Um, it's like this vacuum, this emptiness, and it's such it's so meaningless in 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 the in the you know in in the course of your life that period of time it sort of just sucks something away from you and so look I, I sort of wanted to create something in response to that um and i wanted to sort of try to go through a process of finding the words that i couldn't find when i was there um and i wanted to create something hopefully of meaning in what you know in response to what was a fairly meaning which what was a meaningless time and if possible create something beautiful out of that experience and something you know when you're making a film you're you're always trying to sort of work out like would anyone else be interested in this would any you know you know you're, you're trying to get past your own vanity and you you know you, your own sense of that your own voice is in some way important and you, you're trying to work out if anyone would care aside from your mum and I found when I was sort of talking about the movie, just when I was in the initial stages of it um, and discussing it with people who weren't necessarily art-based, men, you know, they'd sort of say, like, oh, have you had some experience with that? And I'd sort of say, like, yeah, I have. I sort of went through this thing that happened. Mm. And, you know, and then from there they go, like, well, this, ha this is what happened to me. This was my – and it just kept happening. Mm you know with so many different people who never would have we never would have spoken about it we never would have had a conversation about that it never would have come up and so i sort of that kind of gave me a little bit of impetus to go like well there, maybe there is something here and, and and maybe it is sort of contributing to a conversation that's difficult to have but sort yeah. of needs to be had and um so that's that's, that's sort of the first uh, sort of phase of it and the second phase was 
I knew that it was my first film. I'd never made a movie before. And, and so whilst I'd spent some time in front of the camera, I'd never been behind it in this way. Mm. Uh, so I needed to make something that was achievable so or, or write something that was achievable. So we, we sh- my wife produced this film with me and, co- you know, with another producer, uh, Marvin. Uh, but we shot the film at our house and we had uh, breakfast and lunch every day in our garage with our cast and crew. And, you know, we made this thing, you know, around our local area with the help of our community. Mm. So that was part of the creative process was what can I get my hands on? You know, what, what what's tangible for me that I can actually kind of, you know, turn into a, a, a movie. So that became part of the kind of creative creative um, jigsaw puzzle as well yeah i absolutely love it and just rewinding a little bit i do appreciate you you know revealing some of those deeper thoughts and and feelings about this film um watching it on the first round it does feel very personal um you can sort of sense that from the film and i was actually going to ask you about your inspiration but you've sort of covered it um because i was going to sub question but I, I do honestly appreciate being so open on that topic um I'm sort of getting me a little bit rattled inside just hearing it too but um for me in my interpretation watching the film it felt like there were various genres um firstly we've got you know Dan this police officer living in a real life what feels like a nightmare for him and the second act definitely hits more of a drama core. And then by the third act, there's a really nice honing in on a thriller aspect. So that's what I took from the film. And I was going to question, yeah. was this always the original plan when you were making this film? Or did you sort of, you know, sort of change a bit of the story and the plot as you went along? Or was it always set in stone to mix a few of the genres up? Well, I I sort of... I, I, a, a few things sort of happened, like sort of once, you know, in the writing process, he was revealed as a cop. Mm. I kind of, you know, he'd be, you know, a sort of small town police officer. I sort of was, there needs to be a crime or there needs to be an investigation of some sort. And then sort of, but I wasn't really hugely interested in a police procedural and but i was interested in a kind of existential investigation if you will <laughs> you know yeah. that that he kind of he kind of th- those two men are kind of you know kind of trying to investigate what went wrong with their life why they're incapable of change and why what you know why they've been brought together and there is a you know there is a circumstance in the film that does bring them together and and but you know that i i did too i did too want there to be a solid story you know so mm-hmm. you know in the third act there is a sort of there is a sort of twist and there is something that is kind of revealed and and you know this beautiful friendship that sort of this unlikely friendship that begins to form is sort of severely tested and these two people who sort of did find some a, 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 a certain comfort in each other's presence and a unique comfort in each other's presence is suddenly makes them both feel stupid for maybe feeling like that and you know what brings out the best in them then sort of brings out the worst so there were a number of sort of I, I guess I didn't really think about it then as such as genres that I was trying to play with, aside from I knew that a police officer, you know, in a film is a certain thing. But I was also interested too in sort of, uh, you know, sort of it's not really naturalism. You know, it's naturalistic, but not naturalism. And it's two men sort of, sort of losing their minds in the bush. <laughs> and I did sort of want to open up the space where a certain heightened and poetic quality could kind of creep into it whilst maintaining a sort of level of reality. Um, and I was also really interested too in trying to kind of less as a narrative sort of thing, but kind of try to uncover and reveal a, a certain feeling that 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 Dan, the main character, is sort of experiencing a density of feeling 
um, that I'm that I was trying to explore as a filmmaker. And yeah, it's a tricky thing to do, but a very interesting and exciting one I found. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So that yeah. Very, very cool. And let's talk a little bit about you. I personally want to get to know you better. Those listening, this is probably more for me than anyone else. But as I mentioned before I hit the record button on this interview this evening, you know, I'm aware of your career. I've seen your films. I've seen your acting career. You know, you're an actor, you're a writer, and now you're you're a director. We've, we were celebrating your film this evening. And I sort of wanted to ask this to get to know you better. Out of all these talents and abilities that you've got, and they are talents, they are great talents, which one, out of curiosity, do you enjoy the most at the moment? What's your number one favorite, if you had to pick? Look, look, I, I've I've lo- I've loved creating this film, but certainly that's been the most vulnerable thing I've ever done. You know, in terms of sort of putting this thing out there, so that, and I hadn't really developed. Uh, you know, you sort of got to develop a second skin when you put a film out. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. sort of the you know the word. You, you sort of sending this little thing out into the world and and you know it it is a it is a skill i think to kind of um you know uh, take all the responses to it and 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 you know find a way to process that and live with everybody's different thoughts and feelings towards it be they positive or negative mm. but look i i think for me man the the, the big thing for me is how close can you be to the center of the conversation mm. when you're creating something? And for me, I just, I love making stuff and I love making stuff with other people. And, mm. and whether that is in, you know, in front of the camera or behind the camera, um, I, I kind of just want to be in that conversation um, there's a certain reality with my sort of acting career where, you know, like I'm, I'm not a Hemsworth where, you know, my name is going to get a project kind of funded and off the ground. So, you know, sometimes those, those roles that you really want where you're in the middle of this whole thing, you know, uh, are a little out of reach, but that's why something like this has been really great because yeah. there's a whole other sort of strand of my work and creativity and contribution that can sort of to start to open up but that's really what i'm looking for man it's not you know yeah it's just how just making shit with people is the best and you can get kind of caught up in a lot of stuff that isn't actually that important but when you're actually there and making stuff it's there's there's nothing like it you know it's it's the best yeah well said and you already mentioned this film is outdoors a lot You've got bushland and and native everything. So obviously filming a lot outside. Was this a big challenge for the film to film a lot outdoors and outside in the bush? Tell me a little more. Yeah, man, it was very very chilly, very chilly, and and we didn't have any uh, you know, any trailers or anything like that. <laughs> and um, you know, so we were just out there, and like Hugo, he'd sort of he'd sort of you know, we, we have, we'd have lunch in my shed and then he'd sort of wander off for his sleep in his little shack. So he'd sort of disappear and go, go off back to his shack. Love it. And he said, actually, he actually handled the cold pretty well. Um, you know, I mean, they're playing new ping pong in this weather, man. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, uh, but he actually said that the coldest he got was when he was in bed. Right. Bizarrely, it was just freezing when he was in his little <laughs> bed. Um, but yeah, look, all those really? elements and stuff, you know, but they were all tapestries of 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 it, and I think people knew what they were, you know, sort of in for. We we were shooting, you know, near sort of Dalesford in winter, um, in Victoria, and that's a chilly time of year. It's a foggy wow. time of year, and but you know, it, it, we wanted that, so I was. I was always cursing when the sun came out, you know, we were like, Oh man, it's too sunny. Like we just, can it just stay misty and miserable? But, um, you know, we, we were just at the mercy of that, but it was, that's what kind of made it beautiful as well. And I was was literally, literally about to say it's part of the film's beauty. And I sort of thought about it while watching the film, it's, it would have been challenging, but at the same token, it's, it's rather soothing and very nice 
to see on wow. the big screen. So, you know, again, I commend you for it. And, and talking about challenges, I'm hoping I'm, this one's not a bad question, but Dan in the film is very hesitant dealing with chickens, bit scared, bit fearful. And apparently this is something that also came from yourself. Is that true? It is, man. It is. So we moved into this house where we shot the film and, and the previous owners, they had about 20 chickens in this paddock over here. And then a rooster and two chickens in this little coop, that the coop that's in the film. And they said, hey, we're going to take all of those chickens, but do you want these? And my, my wife and I were like, yeah, of course, you know, we love that. We, we're going to love them so mm. much. And uh, we called the, um, we called one was the, the two chickens were Whitney after Whitney Houston and Celine <laughs> after Celine Dion. And then the rooster was called um, Pavarotti. And, you know, so we'd go in, in, the, in our first day there and we're like, good morning, chickens. We love you <laughs> so much. And, and, this rooster just went bananas, man, and just a psychopath. And he cut up my poor wife's legs. And, you know, and every day I'd go out to feed them and, and let them out. And I had to have this shovel to to ward him off because he would just chase me around the property. So he changed his name to Charles after Charles Manson because <laughs> he was such a psychopath. But, you know, he lived till old age. He just, you know, and anyway, there was just this, it was a daily dance of this, you know, insane rooster who just anytime you got near him would, would attack you. Um, and it just sort of was this little seed of, you know, a, you know, it was, it was interesting kind of just exploring a kind of beta character, you know, there's this creature out there who's just full of masculine anger, rage, you know, violence, sexual dominance. And, you know, and then you've got this kind of rather timid fellow getting chased around by this creature and, mm. you know, but it's his house and it's his life. And, you know, so it, it was just felt like a really interesting little tapestry to have. And, you know, another, another little seed that led to the movie was, um, <clears throat> you know, there's this poem by this Korean poet that's like this paraphrasing it's a one-line poem but it's something like morning bird song on hearing that i'm alive and you know hearing this rooster crow each morning you, you you know it is this indication that you are still you're here you've sort of made it through another night and you're still on on the earth and then when is the when that is no longer happening it, suddenly this character becomes extremely untethered and it felt very akin to sort of a mental health episode where you sort of like you lose the, the things that kind of plant you on the earth and, and, and give you structure and routine and you drift into a sort of dreamlike space in a so, way. Yeah. So, but anyway, that's where the rooster came into it and why yeah. it sort of was called that. Yeah. I'm so glad yeah. I asked. I was like, do I, I was like, I, I have to ask. I was curious. I knew there'd be something behind that. So again, you yeah, know, yeah. thank you for sharing that. And let's lighten the mood a little bit. Hugo Weaving, um, I love this man. If you're watching, love you. Um, look, he is tremendous in this film. They're, he's hilarious. And there are moments where you really get your heart pulled by him as well. Um, but it's no secret, you know, we go on IMBD and we sort of discover that you and Hugo have actually shared the screen together in certain films. And so I was sort of curious to ask two questions. One, you know, have you worked with Hugo to the point you're like, man, if I make a film, you, I want you in my film. Um, you know, did you always sort of pen him in for a future film? And then two, you know, some of these lines of dialogue, they're so outrageous. I was curious, did you ever let him ad lib and get a little bit wild and crazy and do something that's a bit off the script? Did you sort of welcome that at all with him or? Um, well, firstly, uh, I, I'd acted with him maybe three times, I think. We've done three three or four films together. I can't remember. But <laughs> yep. I I just love the guy. I, oh, yeah. I love the man and I just love the way he carries himself in the in this business and separate from his extraordinary artistry, um, which truly is extraordinary. And what he does in the film, I think, is just unbelievable and so raw and funny and human. And watching the work that he and Phoenix do together, I just... I just find truly beautiful the space that they both hold for each other. 
But look, the other thing about him that I admire so much is that he is a true advocate for Australian film mm. and for the Australian voice and for the importance of the Australian conversation in a way that sometimes I even find kind of confronting. Like you can have doubt, you know, of just like, I don't give a fuck about Australian films. <laughs> Yeah. And his sort of passion and advocacy and uh, belief in the importance of the Australian voice commenting and questioning the Australian culture, the Australian psyche, um, I just find so inspirational. Um, so I, it, it, it wasn't, I hadn't pre-planned it of like, I'm, I want to make a movie with this guy. Gotcha. Like, but uh, you know, he's just the best to be around. But I wrote the role for him. I, I you know, but mm. it just came out that way. I was just like, I was just writing for him. Yeah. And I, I just love working with him. And he's so brave and he's so uh, down to earth and just, you know, man, like it's Hugo Weaving. Oh, totally. us, you know, he's showing up. He's showing up on a on a on a a first time filmmaker's film mm. where you know. It, as I said, we're we're going to our garage every day for food. It, the makeup room is the spare bedroom, and it's a balls out, huge, scary, out there part, which is risky. You know, mm -hmm. it's a scary thing to do, and you can. It, it's a part that you can. It's a big swing. You can fail at that, but the bravery, the generosity, the openness um, was just extraordinary. Uh, and so look, I believe it or not, it's all scripted, but no. so he didn't actually impro that much, but just how he did it, you're like, like, but that's the thing. It sort of feels like it's like it's improvised because he's a genius. That's, that's what I'm getting at. There's certain one liners. I'm yeah. like, did he just make that up? Is he, you know, like you just couldn't help but to question whether or not he's having so much fun with the character that he just went, you know, I'm going to say this and say that. But the fact that it's actually in the script for the vast majority, it's it's just brilliant. I yeah. agree with you. And and obviously, you know, Hugo is, is tremendous in the film, but obviously you, you've got to commend the work that comes from, you know, Phoenix is playing Dan as well. This is a, an integral part of the film as well. Wow. And same sort of question, I guess, is how did you discover this actor for Dan as well, which is, again, massively impacting when you see what this guy goes through oh man yeah look uh, phoenix came through a couple of recommendations yep. and one of our the other producer on the film marvin said just have a look at this guy and and i needed to find an actor who like who without sort of telling you what's going on you could feel their inner life their mm -hmm. inner their inner struggle and Phoenix just has this beautiful softness that I was sort of hunting for and this ability to kind of hold the whole film and the whole journey and be able to hold his own in a space where Hugo Weaving is coming at you at 200 Ks an hour like a fucking psychopath. Oh, yeah. And, and, and he just holds it and he holds the movie just in his eyes. Yeah. And I just think it's so beautiful what he's done, his work, and, and and sort of what I mentioned before, the space that they allowed each other to occupy, you know, was just beautiful to watch, these two guys. So, look, I saw him, he, most recently he did a thing, uh, Clickbait, which was a Netflix show, but I also saw him as in this um, uh Australian film from a few years ago called Below, uh, where he played a cage fighter in in the the refugee camps in sort of mm. Western Australia. Yeah, okay. And yeah, it's got Ryan Cor and Lapalia in it as well. And um, and he just had that sort sort of certain something that you just look at him and there's so much happening inside, and he's not telling you what it is. It's just, it's just really present and. And so we were so fortunate to get in and, and, you know, it doesn't hurt too that he's, you know, an incredibly handsome, dare I say it, rooster as well. Yeah. And just has a masculine presence. Like you yeah. sort of buy him as a, he has a masculine presence, but a softness, which is so unique yeah. and, and, 
um you know so yeah and just yeah the work that those two guys did together i just thought was just so stunning and beautiful come on so yeah. good and you know as i sort of said again before we press the record button i've been following your career and i've been very excited for what's to come from your career next and i'm very confident that when people see the rooster uh they're going to be checking out your name on imbd and letterbox whatever and they're going to be very curious to know what you're going to be taking on next and i was sort of curious probably again for myself to ask, have you got any sort of upcoming projects that you might like to plug or reveal? What's next for your career? Well, um, look, I'd I'd love to make another film. Uh, right. I have just learned so much in this process in such a short period of time uh, right. that, you know, just sort of to put into practice some of those things and, and you know, if you're fortunate enough to get another go at it, um, you know, I'd love to do that. So I'm sort of dreaming on stuff at the minute. It's not quite ready to sort of talk about. Um, yep, yep. And then aside from that, a few little acting projects, but nothing on screen at the minute. There's some okay. stage stuff that I'm sort of doing. So, um, so, but there's a few things happening and you never know what's going to happen, but yeah, certainly I just, it, I, yeah, I would love to make another film. It's such a, a beautiful, consuming, frightening, amazing sort of thing to do. And, um, you know, it's been it's been very rewarding uh, yeah. process too. Yeah. So good. Well, if you're going behind the camera, you've got my support in advance, sight unseen. So um, I would love to talk more about this film, but I also don't want to reveal big spoilers and things like that. I want people to go to the cinemas in Australia and really experience it. The less you know, probably the better. But I do want to give you the floor in a second as we come to a bit of a summary and close. And I just wanted to say to you that, you know, The Rooster is available in Australian cinemas from February 22nd. And I wanted to say, if I gave you 30 seconds or maybe even a minute to sort of close this interview off, what is it that you would tell the people of Australia? Why should they go out and buy a ticket and go check out The Rooster? The floor is yours. What would you like to say to the people of Australia? Well, I think that the film is very open. I think the film is like an open hand. You know, it's sort of, it's sort of trying to open itself up to you and sort of go like, have you ever sort of felt like this? Have you ever had these, um, these sort of difficult, strange feelings? And uh, and I think I'd ask the people of Australia. To to embrace their strangeness and get ready for a little strangeness and uh, be able to kind of find humor and uh, in some some difficult places, but kind of, you know, have a conversation that we kind of want to have in a sort of entertaining and ultimately, I think, hopeful way. And I think that there's something beautiful there and I hope that it resonates with people and, you know, and just supporting Australian film is a beautiful thing to do. <laughs> well, so and I, Yeah. And I do think too, like there's some stuff in there that's just funny as shit and oh, crazy absolutely. as shit. And, and it's weird and sort of strange. And, and I think there's a lot there for people. Um, and all you can really hope is that it finds the people that it will talk to and that it was made for and that want to find it. And you just hope that that happens. Um, but certainly to the people of Australia, I do think that what Hugo has done with this role is something a little special and out of the box and rare and beautiful. And as I've said in earlier, you know, the work that those two men do together, um, you know, is, is pretty special. Yeah. I 100% agree with you on everything you just said. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the rooster is available in Australian cinemas, February 22nd, pre ticket, uh, pre order your tickets. Now buy them for a friend and family. The list goes on support this film. And joining me right now is the director and writer, Mark. I wish you all the very best. I think Australia's uh, people of Australia are really in for a treat with this one, mate. Guarantee it. Oh man. I, look, fingers crossed. I hope so. And you know, yeah, just yeah I, thanks for having me on though and it's been just really fantastic to My talk pleasure. with you I'm about very, it and i yeah, very yeah, thankful really for your appreciate your support yeah absolutely thank you again